Apache Longbow is principally a killing machine, and it requires special qualities to become its pilot. But the aggressive nature of an attack pilot, the attack pilot is always out there looking for a fight, and he's willing to get into the scrap, and he's, and he's willing to put his neck on the line in order to protect the soldiers on the ground. The attack pilot is your more aggressive type A personality. He's going to go out there, and his job is to want to get into the fight. He's going to have the courage to want to stay in the fight and to mission first, mission accomplishment. We're out there to protect the ground guys. We're out there to protect other helicopters that we may be escorting, and we're very, very mission-oriented. Uh, this is the greatest job that you can possibly have. Uh, I wouldn't trade it for the world. The thing that links all pilots everywhere is their shared passion for flying, regardless of the aircraft or its role. Nolan Beck has been flying for 18 years and is a test pilot on one of the most successful military helicopters ever made, the Black Hawk. I love to fly uh, any aircraft, but what I like most about the Black Hawk is its versatility. I can be moving troops one day across enemy lines, moving uh, cargo one day, and moving external loads the next day. It's very easily changeable. It's not the same mission every day. Blackhawk flies 50% of the Army's uh, flying hours. Fifteen hundred and fifty of them are still buying them to go to sixteen hundred and eighty. It performs every major aviation mission that we have. It can be fully armed and is fully armed in several configurations. The Black Hawk has been in every war the United States has fought since the 80s. It is a utility helicopter, carrying out virtually every job on the battlefield. Troop and equipment carry, medical evacuation, search and rescue, even command and control missions. The history of the Black Hawk is such that it was named for uh, Chief Black Hawk. He was a chief of the Sauk tribe uh, in, the, uh, in the Rock Island, uh, Illinois area. And uh, the chief sided with uh, the British in the War of 1812. And uh, subsequent to that war, he became uh, uh, very close to some of our leaders. In particular, in 1833, President Andrew Jackson uh, became very impressed with his candor, courage, and convictions. Uh, and we uh, became a great national icon. And subsequently, we named the aircraft the Black Hawk uh, after the chief. The Black Hawk is a fairly powerful uh, aircraft. It, uh, it can lift a lot of troops and a lot of equipment and gets there quickly and uh, it handles quite nicely. It, uh, it's very responsive. The Black Hawk, like all combat helicopters, flies low when possible to avoid being detected and attacked. One of the other uh, great advantages of flying a helicopter is being able to fly at treetop level. This uh, reduces your exposure time to enemy forces, which enhances your survivability rate. Uh, on the other side of that, is that when you're flying close to the trees, anything that sticks up out of the trees could pose a hazard to your aircraft. So you have to constantly scan outside the aircraft and make sure you don't run into obstructions. I've flown uh, high-performance jets and helicopters, and flying a helicopter at treetop level, I think, is a lot more exciting than flying a jet in altitude. Automated weather observation two, two, five, four, Zulu weather. But for all its excellence, the Black Hawk is not equipped for the coming digital age. We seek overmatch of the enemy in so many ways. Lethality, survivability, uh, sustainability, transportability. I mean, we have so many ways that we, are, we want to be far superior to our enemy. One of which is information or digitization. Information is crucial to success in the battlefield. Digitization provides the commanders and pilots with situational awareness, 
which is the ability to know at any given moment exactly where the enemy is, as well as friendly forces. Essential if one is to hit the enemy and not one's allies. You cannot overstate the significance of that. That's very, very profound. Colonel Lake sees it rather like a one-sided chess game. I guess there is an analogy, and I've heard it a long time ago when digitization was at its very, very inception, and, and these concepts were being briefed uh, to the leadership of the Army at that time, and uh, they likened it to a chess game where there was a two-way mirror, and uh, a person on one side was able to see what both teams were doing, and the other person could see only what he was doing in the mirror. And, um, and, of course, it really gets worse than that because that person would likely not even be able to know what he was doing. But uh, that, that's probably a great analogy. You can see everything. They can only see what they're doing at best. Despite its superb combat record, if the Black Hawks to become part of the future digital army, it will need a digital upgrade. For about half the price of a new aircraft, uh, we can remanufacture the UH-60A models, give them 20, more, 20 years additional service life, full glass cockpit, getting rid of analog steam gauges, removing the obsolescence problem from the avionics. Uh, we refurbish the aircraft, treat it for corrosion and stresses and those sorts of things, uh, put on more powerful engines, wide cord blades, it becomes more maneuverable, it's going to fit in perfectly with the objective force and it'll give it, the Army, the utility helicopter for the next 20 to 30 years without having to go out and do a new start. But the U.S. Army has an even older helicopter that it wants to upgrade for the digital battlefield. Keeping successful designs going is United States Army policy. One machine that has made the grade from analog to digital is Black Hawk's big brother, the Chinook. Fifteen and a half meters long and weighing a mighty 14,500 kilograms, the twin rotored Chinook has been in service since the Vietnam War in 1972. But despite its age, it's being upgraded for the digital battlefield. Tandem rotors, a loading ramp in the tail, and the ability to carry heavy loads slung underneath makes the Chinook the most versatile military helicopter ever created. This one is, is named for a Chinook tribe, but also this one puts out a lot of wind and there's a Chinook wind. So uh, this is almost like a flying tornado with the amount of downwash that this aircraft puts out. Most helicopters like the Apache and Black Hawk use a main rotor for lift and have a smaller tail rotor that prevents the fuselage from spinning around. However, this uses a significant amount of engine power that could have been used for lift. On a tandem rotor helicopter like the Chinook, the two main rotors rotate in opposite directions canceling out any tendency for the fuselage to want to spin. All the available power from the twin engines goes to both rotors for lift. We talk about the Chinook being a tandem rotor helicopter and it being an innovation. It's not really an innovation. It's, it's a 40-year-old innovation. It stood the test of time because it provides you such great longitudinal stability and control within the aircraft. The Chinook is the king of the heavy lift being capable of carrying 11,800 kilograms, the equivalent of a small tank. It is especially good at high altitude work, where the air is thin and the efficiency of the blades deteriorates. It's been the only helicopter that the U.S. forces have had that have been able to operate in the altitudes in excess of 16,000 feet in Afghanistan. I don't want to get into criticizing my, my Black Hawk brothers because it's a great aircraft for what it